For example, a fire spirit's fire magic. There were also water, wind, and earth spirit balls. It was about the size of a baseball not too big. What was concerning her was the Prisef bow was 50,000 luz. Each knife was a 1,000 luz. Each spirit ball was 10,000 luz. Back quote the spirit ball is expensive. However, it was easy to use for the strong and even for the weak like Celestina. She was thinking about her leftover savings and her mand point she had to think about the expenses hereafter as well. It was a little tight. She obviously had to spend on the development of the village, his salary and she may even need to employ a maid and an escort after this. Back quote Yosh, I've decided. I'll take a bow and spirit balls point can you give me 5 spirit balls? It would be very expensive to defeat 1000 monsters with spirit balls, so it would be better to try out the bow first. The spirit ball had high attacking power, so she bought it for emergencies and she also wanted to keep some in the village. 5 spirit balls point thank you. The shop owner nodded brightly. The spirit balls were expensive, so they weren't used as the main weapon. But it was better to keep a few. We also need a weapon for Hisu. I want to be an avant-garde so something like a sword would be good right? I'll prepare it immediately. The shop owner quickly brought some long swords, daggers, hammer, etc, and lined them up. After buying the weapon to Lessener, Hisu and Toy headed to the village, to inform them about the schedule. There were two main things, that they needed to do today. She had to have a meeting with Anton about the blessing ceremony. It would take about 10 days to reach the great shrine, so they had to leave before the 30th day of the month of autumn. The second was about the weapons that they bought today. She wanted to keep the spirit balls in the village for emergencies. With a spirit ball, it was possible to defeat or repel even the most ferocious beasts. Back quote I have to quickly defeat the monsters and increase the level. It was easy to find 1000 beasts in the game but this was real life now. It was going to be hard work to defeat so many beasts. Additionally as a real person fighting was her biggest concern. Celestina was wondering if she would do well when Toy barked. Woof there a toy. What happened? Woof woof. Fufu. Foo foo. It tickles. Toy came to her to play, and Celestina couched down to hug him. It seemed like he wanted to encourage her, since she was feeling anxious. Thank you, Toy. I'll do my best, woof. Having this soft and adorable toy encourage her, she felt like she could even defeat 1000 beasts. Back quote un, I can do it. The great tree has also bloomed, I can definitely do it. Let's be positive. Lady Cell, I spoke to Anton, so we can go to his house are you playing? Hisu. Hisu had confirmed that Anton was at home and returned. Toy stepped away from her maturely, or so she thought. He was now playing with Hisu. Back quote could it be that he just wanted to play? She smiled thinking about that. Let's go to Mr. Anton's house then. Yes. Four types of spirit balls were lined up on his table two of each type. Anton's eyes flew open in shock that he couldn't hide. He glanced over it earnestly and then anxiously looked at Celestina. Lady Celestina, this is I think that these are spirit balls but... Yes. The security in this village still isn't enough that's why I prepared these for protection. If something happens then please use these to protect yourselves. Anton slowly let out a breath and picked up one spirit ball. This is my first time seeing them. It's good if you can even have one of these so to have these many pointed wasn't something that we could get our hands on. He returned the spirit ball to the table and smiled happily. Thank you, Lady Celestina. If something happens. I swear to protect the village with these. Hearing his unexpected but sincere oath, Celestina felt that she could leave the village in his hands. He would cherish the village, 
and protect the future of the children. Thank you, Mr. Anton. But please don't push yourself too hard okay? Sometimes it's better to run instead of fighting. Just because there was a spirit ball it didn't mean that fighting was necessary. Understood. Life comes first. Yes. She was relieved hearing Anton's words next she needed to confirm the schedule. It's about the ceremony so won't it be better if Jisel heard it too? A-H-H, that would be good. I think she should be at the fields right now let me call her. He got up from his chair, opened the door, and called out to her. Jisel the field was close to his house, so he would be audible. Yes. Grandpa Anton, what is it? Jisel came running, and entered the house. Ah, Lady Celestina. Good afternoon. Good afternoon Jisel. I'll talk about the ceremony for blessings now. What ceremony for blessings? I'm so happy, I'm really looking forward to it. The five-year-old Jisel smiled like a blooming flower. She had light pink hair that was tied back at both sides, and decorated with flowers. Her white apron was slightly dirty. She had probably been working in the fields. It'll be nice to know your blessings right. Yes. Selesna, Hisu, Anton, and Jisel sat around the table and Hisu explained the schedule. It takes about 10 days to reach the Great Shrine, so we'll leave around the 30th of the month of autumn. I'll contact you once again with the exact date once we are closer to it. I'll prepare the carriage so don't worry. Understood. Yes. Anton nodded and Jisel responded with enthusiasm. She wanted to the seal f her blessings quickly. Back quote I must prepare a carriage for this village. There were a lot of things that she needed to buy before a carriage, so the carriage would be postponed for now. Morris would be attending his ceremony in the month of spring next year, so she would have the carriage prepared by then. Soratek had mentioned inadvertently that he would come along to the Great Shrine as well. He would obviously come in a separate carriage, but the villagers hadn't really interacted with him. It'll be good if it doesn't end up into something big. Selesina had to write a letter to Soratek about the schedule as well she was thinking about various things. After discussing the schedule with Anton at his place they went to water the great tree, greet the villagers, and then to hunt the monsters. Let's start with weak prey first. That would be good. I think we can start with flower rabbits. The demon that Hisu suggested was the weakest in the game. It's a white rabbit, and it had a flower growing on his head. It was treated as a mascot. The flower on its head doesn't really wither, so it's often used as gifts. After riding the carriage for an hour they reach the forest, where the flower rabbit is found. There was a grassland in front of the forest. The flower rabbit eats grass for food in the afternoon and it returns to its den in the forest at night. It would be difficult to hit it from here, but even if they were able to confront it, it wouldn't be dangerous either. I'll draw the attention of the flower rabbit with my sword, so Lady Cell please shoot the arrow. Understood. Hisu went to the border between the grassland and the forest, and exclaimed after a few minutes, It's there. Celestina's body began to tremble. It was already time to hunt point her heart was pounding. Back quote it's alright, let's breathe deeply first. Inhale exhale inhale exhale Hisu had stopped the forward movement of the flower rabbit with his sword. The flower rabbit seemed angry and he began to attack Hisu didn't seem to take any damage. She was relieved and she prepared the bow and arrow. The bow was small and light, convenient for a girl like Celestina. It was made with a slim piece of wood. It wasn't very powerful but it could fly to a certain distance. NN when she prepared the bow and arrow, he suddenly noticed. Back quote if I attack from here then I might end up hitting Hisu. There was no chance of hitting your friend in the game but this was reality. Celestina had never trained in archery before now. 
Backquote I must make Hisu leave from there. Hisu it's difficult for me to aim so please create a little distance. Ah, that's right Hisu tried to create some distance between him and the flower rabbit, but the flower rabbit continued to attack him. If he really tried to escape from here then the flower rabbit may end up running away. A-H-H. Celestina let out a silent sigh. There was no way out. It will be difficult for me to defeat it now so can you please defeat it? Understood. She requested Hisu to defeat it, since there was no other way. Hisu sliced his sword from bottom up, and the flower rabbit was defeated in the blink of an eye. Its flower fell off its head. Let's start by doing some target practice first. Yes, please do prepare it. It seems like it would be pretty difficult to reach back quote blessings of the amulet level 2 feet. Celestina started to make the preparations needed in order to go to the great shrine once she reached the mansion in Harmel. Lady Cell, what do you want to take with you? There is nothing specific that I need, just some clothes Anne. She suddenly realized. Backquote it's fine to ask Hisu to prepare the stuff for her, but it's embarrassing point to ask him to prepare underwear. At her mansion in the royal capital, her maid Anna makes all those preparations. A female servant prepared her stuff in this mansion as well. Hisu was responsible for managing her schedule and other village related matters. She needed to bring a female servant with her when she went to the great shrine. Backquote but she couldn't ask Anna or any maids from this mansion to go along with her for village related affairs she wanted to do this later, but she realized that she needed to look for a maid in earnest, Lady Cell. Hisu was curious watching Celeste in a so deep in thought. He was wondering if there was some problem. Celestina smiled and explained the reason to him. I have been taking the help of a female servant till now, but I think that it's necessary for me to find a maid for myself. I would like her to help me with the village and come along with me when we go to the great shrine maid. Yes. After all, I can't leave the preparations of my underwear on you. Even if she was going to break up with Sora Tech, right now she was the FMK of the Crown Prince Sora Tech. It wasn't right to leave the preparations of her underwear to a man. Hisu immediately understood her explanation. It would certainly not be good for me as a man to do that then how about asking a woman from Selin Village to work as your maid? Selin Villages? Yes. She can continue working in the village on normal days, but when you go to the village she can accompany you as your maid. Hisu's proposal made sense. It would be difficult for someone to suddenly become the maid of the backquote daughter of Marquis, but if she were to say, you can work as my maid when I'm in the village, or when I'm going out for village related affairs that would be alright. It might work out well. Let's discuss it out tomorrow. There are two women, Adet and Sophie in the village. I'll contact Anton first. Yes, thank you. It would be startling if they were to suddenly announce tomorrow that they need someone to work as a maid. Hisu would take a fast horse to send a letter explaining the situation to Anton. Hisu bowed and left the room. Yosh. I'll contact Lord Soratek about the scheduled date for visiting the Great Shrine. She removed a letter paper from her desk drawer and started to write. It was still more than a month away so adjusting the schedule shouldn't be a problem. She also told him that she would like to visit the Great Shrine since a child of the village needed to attend the blessings ceremony. She also wrote about how many other companions they would have. She would ask Hisu later to send it in. Yuen. Perfect. We'll be going to the Great Shrine later so, there are a lot of things that I want to understand first. By managing the land and growing the Great Tree you can obtain several skills in the Asgaral system. You can also obtain some at the Great Shrine, so she wanted to acquire them at the ceremony this time. 
Some were easy but some were fairly difficult. Ah, that's right. It might slip out of my mind so let's make a list. The quests that can be completed efficiently. This will also help with the development of the village. Celestina wrote down all that she remembered happily. The next day, Sophie and Adette were panicking inside Anton's house who had told them about the contents of the letter that Hisu delivered. We'll be taking care of Lady Celestina. Adette and Sophie had grown up in a slum, so they never thought that they would ever come in contact with aristocrats in order to survive. But Celestina became the lord of the village, of the second district, and she had an opportunity to speak to her. Moreover, she spoke to them as an equal, and not as someone looking down on them. Adette and Sophie were so happy about that that they remembered it, as if it had just taken place yesterday. They remembered how excited they were, and how touched they were, when she spoke to them. But, Grandpa Anton. We have no knowledge of etiquette, so it won't be easy for us to take care of her. We are happy point, but we would hate it Lady Celestina were to be humiliated, because of us were worried. The one that was most concerned about this was Sophie. She was a 20 year old woman with orange hair tied back in a ponytail. An energetic and happy woman. I think so too. Lady Celestina has done a lot for us, but I'm worried that I may not be able to serve her well. But, I also feel like I want to do it. The one said that she wanted to return the favor was a debt. She had light chestnut colored hair that was braided with some of it loose in the front. A 20 year old woman who is gentle and kind. She also helped with the stall selling potato chips. Anton smiles happily when he hears the two of them. You guys really love Lady Celestina. Of course. That's obvious. Sophie and Adette responded together. Ah they looked at each other and laughed when they realized that they had spoken together. Point I think it's better if Adette does it. See, I'm a little hot tempered and arrogant, right? That, I can't deny it. Right. Caring for Celestina would be something to feel honored about, but Sophie frowned a little and then smiled. She couldn't help her this time. She wanted to live up to her expectations, if she were to do it. However, she had chosen to decline this time, since there was someone more suitable than her. Adette felt a little sorry at Sophie's words. However, Sophie's reasoning was true. Understood. I'll take care of Lady Celestina well for Sophie as well. I'll also teach what I learned to Sophie. That way I'm sure that there will be a day when the two of us can care for Lady Celestina together. Adette Sophie's eyes became warm because of Adette's unexpected care. Looks like we've decided. Yee. The two of them had completely forgotten about Anton's existence. They had entered their own world and forgotten about him. The two of them really loved Celestina who had now become their lord. Yosh. I'll do my best and take care of Selin village when Lady Celestina is out and surprise her when she is back. I'll also do my best to take care of her. I won't lose to you. Celestina who had heard the exchange outside the door inadvertently was now looking forward to the future of the village. Celestina returned to the mansion in the royal capital along with Adette who was now playing the role of the maid. Adette was going to spend a few days with her in order to learn about her work. You are the royal capital is beautiful. It's my first time coming here. That's right. In that case, let's make some time to go around the capital. Ah, thank you. Adette had come to the royal capital to learn the ropes of her work, so she never expected to be able to have the time go out. She would obviously have breaks, but she planned to study and learn at that time. Anna came to welcome them once they got down from the carriage. Welcome back Lady Celestina. We've returned. Let me introduce you. This is Adette from Selin Village. She will be taking care of me. 
Adet nervously took a step forward when Celestina introduced her. She had both her trembling hands grasped tightly in front of her chest. She bowed her head deeply. Nice to meet you I am Adet. Well, caring for Lady Celestina? I'm Lady Celestina's maid Anna. Nice to meet you too. Anna smiled kindly and looked at Adet. She looked over her in a 360 degree view and touched her shoulder. Adet tensed and moaned unconsciously. Be more proud and more aware of your posture. Backquote ye, yes. That's good. This posture looks beautiful. Thank you. Adet hadn't really paid attention to her posture till now, but it felt good to stretch her spine and stand proudly. Celestina watched their exchange and smiled. Anna. Adet will be coming along with me after a while so please teach her the ropes as her senior, while she is in the mansion. Certainly. I'll be making some preparations, so Miss Adet can come with me. Lady Celestina please rest in your room. Yes. It was fine to leave a debt to Anna. As long as she has basic manner and etiquette, it would be easy for her to learn. Hisu, shall we go my room on my? A carriage came over when she was talking. It had the emblem of the royal capital on it, probably saw a text. Backquote perhaps the reply to my letter? I'll return to my room with Toy so can you please take the reply? Yes. Celestina left it to Hisu, and left for her room. Hana, your super soft fur is the best healing toy, woof. Once she returned back to her room she quickly hugged Toy. It was her fluffy time. Normally she had to behave like an elegant lady, so she could only enjoy the fluff to her heart's content, when no one was around. She buried her face in Toy's soft fur, and enjoyed the warmth of the hug. HAA point I love you woof, do you love me as well, toy, I'm so happy. She held his paws, and enjoyed the feeling. She hadn't had the chance, to spend time with toy recently, so she was very meticulous right now. Back quote ah, uh, that's right. I bought that thinking, that you might like it toy, woof, she saw it in town, or think piece of meat. The shop assistant told her that dogs would like it, since it was so hard, so she bought it in a haste for Toy. She took it out of her bag and she saw Toy's eyes begin to sparkle. His tongue was also out. He looked like he really wanted to eat it. Here Toy, woof, Celestina handed over the meat to him, and he started to wag his tail and chew on it. There was a knock on the wild Toy was happily enjoying his meat. Hisu entered inside once she gave permission. I was given a letter by Lord Sora Tex Page. What are you doing Lady Cell? I gave some meat to Toy, since he is always doing his best. She returned to the lady mode and smiled. The fluffy time until now seemed like a lie. Hisu sighed, gave the letter to Celestina, and then proceeded to take some of Toy's fur off from Celestina's hair. Our lady cell is surprisingly out of place. Hisu laughed. Back quote Hisu is really alert I was just playing with toy for a little bit. I'll check the letter so can you get me a paper knife. Here. Thank you. The letter was a reply to the schedule about visiting the great shrine. In general, it was as Celestina had assumed. Did something happen? There is no major change to the schedule that we set in advance. Lord Soratek had adjusted his work schedule. That's great. It was as Hisu said, but Celestina was worried whether it was really great. Backquote the round trip will take about 20 days, so he won't be able to deepen his bond with the heroine. She forgot about it due to managing the territory but this was the world of a fantasy game named backquote Maiden of Asgeral, and she was the villainess. The heroine was currently rushing down the Sorotek route and Celestina's fate would depend on its ending. Should the heroine achieve the happy end, then Celestina would be exiled. Should she reach the bad end then Celestina would die. 
back quote if the two of them don't grow closer then I will die. But she would not be inviting the heroine Miria to join them. She was not good with those kinds of girls. Back quote but it's encouraging to go to the great shrine with Lord Soratek, the crown prince. Since she didn't have any blessings, she was a little concerned about going to the great shrine again. But the plan was underway already so there was no other choice, a knock on the door interrupted her thoughts. Come in. Excuse me. Excuse me. Anna entered with a tea set, and Adet entered in a maid uniform with a bouquet of roses. She immediately realized that Sora Tech sent those along with the letter. Adet gently walked to Selesna and handed over the bouquet to her. It's a gift from Lord Sora Tech. Back quote thank you, Adet. Can you display it in the room? Yes of course. I was surprised, since the roses were so big and beautiful. Adet was impressed, since she had never seen such beautiful roses before. I think those are cared for, and grown by the castle gardener. He tends to it every day in order to ensure, that they grow beautifully. Amazing Adet displayed the roses in the vase as Inna instructed her, and watched carefully as Inna poured tea. She was watching with great seriousness and learning quickly. Adet, the maid uniform looks good on you. You can learn the work, while you stay in this mansion, but you can return to the village after that so rest assured. Thank you. I'll do my best for you Lady Celestina. Adet declared. Adet absorbed it all at an outstanding speed. Soon it was time for them to leave for the Great Shrine. Back quote nnn point nice weather. Feels like a good day to depart. Few few fun she subconsciously began to whistle. Celestina was the only one in the room right now, so that much should be fine. She looked out of the window to see a carriage and a coachman hired for this trip. He was carefully doing a final check of the condition of the carriage. Thank God, he seems like a good man. Adet came in to begin preparations, while she was looking outside the window. Good morning Lady Celestina. Good morning Adet. You've grown exponentially, since the first time you became my caretaker. No I still have a long way to go. Adet shyly shook her head, when Celestina praised her excellence. According to Adet, she had finally reached the starting line. I have to do my best, in order to catch up to Anna. Thank you. It really is a great help to know, that you're doing your best. We'll be leaving for the Great Shrine today, so I'll be in your care. Yes. Celestina changed into her usual rose red dress and white jacket, and sat in front of the dresser. Odette immediately began to comb her hair. She braided the hair in the front, and curled the side, to make a bun on her side. Satisfied with the image in the mirror, Celestina thanked Odette and stood up. She would have breakfast now and then leave. It's been a long time, since we've gone out together so. Yes. Seeing Soratek smile so cheerfully Celestina also responded with a smile. Soratek was going to accompany her on this trip. He came to pick her up. They were now going to head to the Great Shrine via Selen village. Hisu, Anton, Adet, and Jisol would be riding the carriage that Celestina had prepared. Soratek had prepared two carriages. Celestina and Soratek would be riding in one. The other one was for Soratek's entourage. Additionally, two escorts would also be going with them on horseback. It had been a long time since Soratek had last gone out with Celestina, so he was really excited internally, even though he pretended to be calm. Come to think of it, it's going to be the second time that you visit Selin Village, right? Yeah. I heard that potato chips are all the rage in the town of Harmel these days. Everyone in the village is doing their best. Ever since a branch of the Pickard Company opened in the village, the flow of goods has improved. Compared to the time when there was nothing at all I'm so happy right now. Sal, 
you're working very hard, almost too hard. The flower of the great tree also bloomed within 4 months. I'm worried about how far my lovely Finn K is going to go hereafter. Lord saw a tech. She smiled gratefully. She was thankful that he cherished her so well. Backquote is expected of main capture target. If she didn't remember that she was a Valenus then she would have been knocked out by that smile. Backquote my face feels hot. Celesina put her hands on the window and asked Soratek if she could open the window. I would like some ventilation. Is that okay? Ah, of course. The wind feels good. That's right. This area, ah. Cell. The scenery visible from the window had the grasslands in front and a forest at the back. There was a hill to the left. Further ahead is a Shaxford territory which is adjacent to the Rinklet territory. Celestina's tension was rising right now due to the place. There is a hill here, although it's actually a cliff. Back quote there is a plant monster at the base of the cliff. Lord Soratek, can we stop for a little bit here? Are you tired? Of course, I don't mind. Soratek immediately nodded and informed the escorts in front of the carriage window. The carriage slowly came to a stop and the coachman opened the window. Soratek got down first and then helped Celeste in her alight. She felt a pleasant breeze when she alighted the carriage. Celestina stretched her spine and called out to Hisu. Hisu can you get my bow? Yes. Soratek looked at Celestina curiously when Hisu nodded. They had stopped the carriage to take a break. Was she going to practice in a place like this? Well, Celestina understood what was going on in Soratek's mind. One of Soratek's escort came to the front. If you want to hold a lesson then I can go with you. Thank you for your consideration Mr. Wilfred, but that shouldn't be necessary. Soratex Knight Escort Wilfred Alice. Golden hair with a little sky blue and sky blue colored eyes. He is a gentleman who is always smiling. He has a lot of support from women. He has a calm disposition. His concentration and speed are excellent among the three solitaire knights. He is also good at quickly entering the opponent's opening with a rapier sword. Listening to Celestina's words he nodded and agreed. Practicing drawing the bow is also very important. UMN. She had apparently made a mistake. Celestina concluded that it would be faster to show them than to explain it to them. So she went with Soratek and Wilfred up the hill near the cliff. Looking down into the cliff Celestina found that there were many monsters that she could target. Back quote yes, perfect. I'm going to aim for that. Soratek and Wilfred looked down to where Celestina was pointing. Trend fairy? I see. That's certainly good for practice. Once they were convinced Hisu came with a bow. Thank you for waiting Lady Cell. An arrow with fire magic will work well on the trend fairy, so I've prepared that as well. Thank you Hisu. Soratek takes in a breath when he sees Celestina move towards the target. I heard that you wanted to practice the bow on the way, but I didn't think that it was this serious cell. I've only just started practicing recently my hit rate is quite low. It's really embarrassing to let you see this Lord Soratek, so I would prefer it if you could wait in the carriage, since he had already confirmed that it was a safe practice method. Soratek could take a break, or so Celestina thought, but Soratek shook his head. Everyone is an amateur at first, so you don't have to worry. Yes. Soratek gently nudged her back and told her that it's alright. Celestina nodded slowly. If she wanted to defeat monsters in the way she would definitely be seen hereafter. Backquote I must defeat 1000 monsters for the sake of the village. This wasn't the time to brood. Celestina fixed the arrow and drew the bow. Whoosh. You are. It hit it. She subconsciously hit it with good power. 
She wanted to shout out. If she suddenly hit it, because Sora Tech was there then she might have fallen due to surprise. Sora Tech praised Celestina with a smiling face, and told her that it was amazing. Wilfred told her that it was wonderful. You did it Lady Cell. Yes. Hisu gave her another arrow, and prepared the bow to shoot once again. The trend fairy that she just hit wasn't defeated yet and was flailing the branches like arms. Trent Fairy. A small tree with consciousness with mid-range magical attacks. However, unlike adult Trent Fairies, these ones cannot move. That's why it was normal to defeat the Trent Fairy from outside of its attack range in the game. Backquote however, I cannot get the materials. If I shoot from the top of the cliff you can use the materials that the trend fairies drop once they are defeated, but it was difficult this time, since she had to climb down the cliff, in order to obtain them. That's why she would regretfully leave them behind this time. EHH. Um she shot the second arrow and the third arrow. The fairy was defeated by the third arrow. She had wanted to defeat it in one shot, but it was obviously impossible currently. That's the way Lady Cell. Thank you Hisu. Hisu stood next to her, and supplied her with arrows and Celestina continued to attack the fairies. Aunt Wilfred and Sora Tech busy watching Celestina from behind. Wilfred gave her some advice. When you shoot the arrow, your shoulders rise, so you should use full power to release it and drop them. In that case, you will be able to draw the bow more. Shoulder rise. Thank you, Sir Wilfred. He not only explained the posture, but he also carefully explained to her how to aim. Does he use a bow, even though uses a rapier? She wondered. But knights must be going through general training. She shot many arrows, to defeat the Trent Fairy. Her second shot pierced the Trent Fairy and shot it down. Ah. Oh h You did it Lady Cell. Wilfred who was watching from the side was pleased, and he applauded, since she was able to defeat the Trent Fairy in two shots instead of three this time. If the skill of the user increases then the power of the same weapon will naturally increase. It grew a little didn't I? That's right. Even by defeating these, you will end up growing, whether you like it or not. Saying that Wilfred looked to the bottom of the cliff with distant eyes. The trend fairies seemed to have dropped a lot of material. There were probably about 100 materials. Celestina also felt that maybe she overdid it on the first day. Backquote but it was a little fun. There was no choice but to do this. There aren't many arrows left so let's stop for today. Besides if we don't go to the next town soon then we may have to camp outside. Yes, I'm sorry for making all of you go along with me. No. Becoming Lady Celestina's strength is the best. When she was about to tell them that they should return to the carriage, one trend fairy came into her vision. Point will I be able to defeat it? She muttered seriously and took out a spirit ball with the magic of fire. With this, she should be able to defeat it in one blow as proven by the game. At the same time, she remembered that she could acquire a skill, if she were to defeat a monster in a single blow. She had completely forgotten about it, since that was a skill, that she had acquired in the game accidentally. I haven't tried its power yet so isn't this good. When everyone turned to go back to the cliff, a pillar of fire suddenly ignited. The trend instantly turned to ash leaving a scorched circle on the ground. Fua. That was a huge flame for a moment there. She had panicked, but luckily there was no fire, so she was relieved. Backquote I was surprised, since it is so powerful. What is that? Sora Tech screamed and immediately ran towards Celestina. He then looked at the scene, and looked at Celestina. Cell. I'm sorry Lord Soratek. I remembered that I had never used the spirit ball that I bought for self-defense before, 
so I used it just now. A-H-H, so you use the spirit ball, but please do tell me, before doing something like that, it makes me worry. Yes I'm sorry, I'll be more careful hereafter. No, I'm not angry. Let's go back to the carriage. Escorted by a gently smiling Sora Tech, Celesina boarded the carriage. The carriage started once again, to reach the place where they had planned to stay. At night, Celesina who was alone in the room, could barely hide her grin. She started the system. As Garol system, start up, Celesina Inklet Great Tree owned, level 5 Guardian Beast, Toy Territory owned, Albert Kingdom, Rinklet Territory District 2 People. 18 Great Tree Skill Fertility Blessings Level 3, Vegetation grows well in a 5 km radius around the Great Tree and soil quality has improved. Sweet Nectar, Level 2, The Great Tree emits a sweet scent and attracts butterflies and bees. Up. Blessings of the Amulet Level 2, No Monsters Come Within 3 km of the Great Tree. Territory named, Yield increases specialty of the village, the recognition of the village increases new. One hit KO, attack power increases to the counterclockwise west of the Rinklet territory was the Shaxford territory, that was connected to the Great Shrine. They had departed for the Great Shrine five days ago, and they had now reached the intermediate point, the town of Kurik as per their schedule. You are, amazing. This town is full of flowers right? It's famous for its perfumes. I'm sure that it will have a nice scent. The town of Kurik was surrounded by lots of flowers. The streets are filled with well-maintained flower beds and each house and shop grows lovely potted flowering plants. There was a watering can along with them. It was like a botanical garden. The inn that Celesina and the others were staying at was decorated with beautiful flower curtains. They released a sweet scent that calmed the heart. Adet and Jissel watched the room interiors, while fidgeting with sparkling eyes. Celesina's face loosened watching that adorable appearance. We'll be departing in the morning tomorrow, so you can relax till then. Adet as well, you can place your luggage in your room, and spend your time as you want till night. Lady Celesina, thank you. Jissel would be going around town with Anton and Celesina would be free as well. She had visited Kurik, while playing the game, but she hadn't visited the place in this life. There were plenty of flower seeds available here, so she planned to purchase some. Back quote it's impossible right now, but I want to create a flower field around the great tree in the future with 100 types of flowers, and call forth divine beasts. It was still a long way away, but she was excited just thinking about it. Back quote Cell, what do you plan to do after this? His timing was good, since she had just called Hisu, and told him, that she wanted to go shopping. Sora Tech asked her to wait. I will go shopping with you as well. But, we are just going shopping for flower seeds, so it might be boring for you. I don't mind. I don't really have many opportunities, to go out with you like this. No matter the purpose, I look forward to it. Lord Sora Tech. It was something that one would tell their lover. Celesina blushed. Since he was a capture target his smile had tremendous destructive power. Celesina acknowledged that she couldn't refuse the offer. You are. There are lots of types. They quickly came to the big flower shop in the center of town. There were several flower related stores with attached greenhouses. There were pretty flowers and carnivorous flowers. A wide collection had been lined up. Backquote you are, it's my first time seeing it in real life. Do they eat, flies and small insects? Celesina inclined her head, and watched the carnivorous flower, that had its mouth open. According to its type, it was considered to be a flower, but she didn't know, whether the system would acknowledge it as a flower. Backquote point let's keep this on hold. There are many types of flowers. Cell, did you like anything? 
There are many types we don't usually see, so I'm a little lost. There were the roses that Celestina liked, and also several other unknown flowers. There were rainbow colored roses. The petals on the outside were transparent. It was so much fun just watching them. Time seemed to pass in the blink of an eye. However, this time around Celestina was searching for flowers to grow and sell in village, so they had to be easy to grow and cheap. The rainbow colored rose from earlier was not extremely expensive, but still considered expensive for the village. Cosmos, Margaret, Geranium, and Verbena might be easy to grow. I want to put them in pots and decorate the village with them. That's good, it will be gorgeous. Celestina gave the names of the flowers and Soratek agreed. Hisu, who was waiting behind them purchased the seeds that she needed. Growing them from seeds was difficult. If they wanted to take saplings then it would be a good idea to purchase them on the way back. Soratek watched Hisu speak to the store manager and placed his hand on his chin. HMN. He called out to another shop assistant. Can you wrap up this backquote platinum rose seedling? Backquote certainly. The inner petals of the platinum rose shone like platinum, and it turned into a light blue as it went outwards. It was beautiful like Celestina, Soratek thought. Will you raise this at Selin Village as well? At Selin Village? Of course Lord Soratek. Thank you. She thanked Soratek for his gift and glanced at the price point there was a difference of about 4 digits in price from the stuff that Celestina had bought. Backquote once my house is complete I'll raise this inside. She couldn't help but be concerned that the stem could break due to strong winds if it were left outside. She would go back and ask the gardener how to care for it and cherish it. They returned back to the inn with Hisu carrying the seeds and the platinum rose sapling in his arms. Buying any more than this would hinder the journey tomorrow. A normal girl would have been interested in perfume but unfortunately, Celestina didn't feel the need for it. Backquota. But, there was an event where you could wear the same perfume as the in-game one. Moreover, an event where you can add perfume was trailing. She remembered the line of the capture target, there is a shop, that I want to visit. Unfortunately, Celestina wouldn't hear that dialogue, since she wasn't the heroine, but she would certainly become nervous, if she were told that. When Celestina was leaving the store, Soratek called out to her. Sal, there is a shop, that I want to visit. A. Hey. The words that came out of Soratek's mouth were those that Celestina was just thinking about. They solidified her thoughts. Asterisk D-O-K-I D-O-K-I asterisk Celestina tried to calm her beating heart. She was breathing. Why was she about to attend the event that the heroine was supposed to participate in? Backquote maybe it's just the same dialogue. He said that there was a shop that he wanted to visit. When she thought about it deeply, maybe he was inviting both her and Hisu to go along with him. Backquote yes, that's the best fit. Celestina nodded with a smile and asked Soratek where he wanted to go. This town is famous for its perfumes, right? I was thinking of looking around for a little bit. That right. Backquote the dialogues of the event, the destination of the event. Well, that because this was the flower town it was just a coincidence. This although it may not be a coincidence after all. Soratek addressed both Hisu and the two escort knights that had come along with them. Hisu and Wilfred can return to the inn ahead of us. Algren can come along with us as an escort. Certainly. Okay. Wilfred and Algren agreed immediately, but Hisu was Celestina's butler. Hisu felt that he couldn't return to the inn ahead of Celestina arbitrarily. Hisu was confused about what to do. He looked towards Celestina. Lord Soratek Hisu is my butler so. I was thinking of taking him along with us. Soratek frowned at Celestina's modest suggestion. It seemed like he did not want to bring Hisu along. 
back quote does he still dislike Hisu? However, Hisu would be with them throughout the trip to the Great Shrine. Celestino wanted Sora Tech to acknowledge him. Of course, it didn't make sense for Hisu to get closer to her than needed. We don't need a butler for a date right? A. Celestina's eyes widened at his unexpected response. She responded to him reflexively, and looked at Sora Tech. She never imagined that he would use the word back quote date. Sora Tech wanted to hold his head. Since you're my fiancé, it's only natural isn't it? Ye. Yes since he told her something like that, she could only nod yes. Celestina was still his fiancé, even though she was to be dumped later on. Hisu I'm sorry, but please return to the inn first. I'll be spending some time with Lord Soratek. Understood. Hisu nodded obediently at Celestina's words. After they saw Hisu and Wilfred off, Algren asked Soratek, Where do you want to go? Soratek's escort, Algren Faulkner. Reed hair and amber colored eyes. He had an athletic physique just like a knight, but his clothing kind of gave him an appearance of a flirt. But he was the escort of the crown prince Soratek. Back quote well, it may be better to look approachable than scary. Celestina decided not to mind his rough way of speaking. I want to go to a place that's called the Garden of Dreams. A-H-H. That specialty perfume store that nobles visit right. Alright. Algren seemed to know the place and he began to walk ahead. Let's go. Sal, will you choose a perfume for me? The specialty perfume store, Garden of Dreams, was a paradise-like place. The perfume bottles were carefully crafted by craftsmen and the bottles would have some flower petals floating inside. Not only were the perfumes relaxing to smell, but they were also visually appealing. Celestina didn't really use regular perfumes so this got her excited. The issue was Sora Tech's words. Algren didn't seem to have any interest in perfumes, so he decided to stand in a place where he could overlook the whole store. I'll choose a perfume that suits you to sell, so let's use them together. Yes back quote oh my. Why is the lover's event from the game going on? Does it take place occasionally? She didn't understand the reason, but she was currently on a date, and he was still her fiancé. She decided to choose a perfume. Sora Tech went to find a perfume for Celestina as well. Celestina's eyes fell on a light blue perfume bottle with ore inside. It seemed to be tanzanite, but it was actually magical. Or that was processed by magicians. The ore was actually blessed by the spirit of water. The perfume had a refreshing scent. It was suitable for a man to use. Celestina took it in her hands and looked at it. Did you find something? Sora Tech called out to her. Ah, I thought that this might be good. It's a beautiful blue. Sora Tech smiled softly. He seemed to be really happy. Celestina understood that he really did like it. I chose one too. I felt that roses really suit you sell. Sora Tech showed her a small bottle with a small angel motif. The cap of the bottle was crafted in the shape of a rose. The liquid inside the bottle was sparkling. It was a faint pink. WAA, really beautiful. Celestina looked at it in fascination and Sora Tech opened the lid. The scent was light, unobtrusive, and sweet. It was perfect for Celestina, not too light. Back quote nice scent. As expected of Lord Soratek, he has great taste. I'll put some on you so give your wrist cell. Uh, um, put some? Since it's perfume, it's better to put some on and check it out, right? Taking Celestina's lightly swaying hand. Sora Tech applied some perfume on her wrist. Was it because she was enveloped in the scent of roses? Or because this development seemed to resemble the game? Celestina's heart was beating loudly. Back quote is it fine? For me to get some perfume. She was worried 
that the event wouldn't take place with the heroine after this. Thank you a lord Soratek. I'm glad that you're happy Cell. Will you apply some on me too? Soratek handed over the bottle to her as he spoke. She had basically agreed without replying. She didn't expect to apply some on him, but since he had done it for her she had no choice. She opened the lid and applied some to his wrist. The mint he sent gave off a clean feeling. Backquote nice scent. Her heart was beating faster. Backquote is this good enough? Yeah, thank you, Cell. Soratek was really happy to have Celestina apply some perfume on him. Actually he was just happy. After all, it wasn't often that they had such a sweet atmosphere between them. Unfortunately, Celestina was thinking along other lines. Backquote I must help Lord Soratek reach the happy end with the heroine. She couldn't get any more conscious than this. Celestina silently took in a deep breath and looked at other perfumes. She was thinking of buying them as a souvenir for Hisu and Adet. Not only was she the daughter of Marquis, but she was also the lord of the second district. She had to move with careful consideration. Soratek smiled and resigned to the fact that for now, this was good enough as he watched Celestina look for some souvenirs. After departing from the town of Curic, they reached the Great Shrine after 5 days with stopovers in the towns on the way. There were children from other places that were heading to the Great Shrine for the Ceremony of Blessings as well, so the place was bustling. The Great Shrine, also known as the Central Shrine was right in the center of this world. Five countries surrounded the Great Shrine. Each country had its own gates to the Great Shrine and anyone could come to the Shrine. The paved roads to the shrine had beautiful flower fields on either side. The shrine was in the shape of a donut and had five entrances and exits. Impressive statues of gods and goddesses were carved in off white marble. The first floor was used for reception and prayer. It had open facilities like a cafeteria, library, etc. The second floor had a break room for visitors and accommodation. The third floor was used for ceremonies and rituals. It also had workrooms for the priests and priestesses and the archives. From the fourth floor onwards public access was prohibited. It held the residences of the people of the shrine. Gisela lighted the carriage and looked at the great shrine with her mouth hanging open. Wow, amazing. Gisela had only seen the big business centers in Harmel and mansions of the nobles from far away. The houses in Selin village were single stories and the branch of Pickard company wasn't too much bigger. Anton seemed to look just as excited as Gisela. It's my first time 2.0, it's really amazing. Celestina smiled at Anton who was deeply impressed. The smaller shrine is closer to Harmel than the great shrine. Let's go to the reception first. Yes, let's go. Celestina saw Anton hold Gisel's hand and called out to Hisu. Hisu, I'll be going to the reception for a little bit. Please go with the debt to request an accommodation. Understood. Yes. In Soratek's case, the shrine had been contacted in advance. So guest rooms were already prepared for him and his aides. Celestina was obviously included as well. Backquote today is for the procedures and tomorrow will be the ceremony point there is no time to spare till it ends. She was planning to record the details for next time. Basically Celestina always planned to go for the ceremonies, but just in case there was a situation where it wasn't possible it was better to record it. Celestina was thinking about various things when Soratek called out to her. I would like to stay with you Cell, but I think that I'll just be in the way, so I'll head to the guest room first. Please call me once you're done. Thank you Lord Soratek. I wish I had planned better it was her first time, so she was trying to get a grasp of things. I don't mind. In case you face any issues. You can always consult me. 
Even if it's just a little, I would like to become your strength. Lord Sora Texalessina was happy due to his consideration, and smiled at him. I'll do my best for Selen Village. I'll visit you once I'm done. Yeah, I'll be waiting. The center of the great shrine filtered natural light with its stained glass. The interior was bright. The chairs were lined up for people from the five countries that would come for the ceremony. There were several people waiting in line. Back quote you are, it's crowded. This was going to take a while. Celestina pulled up a wooden stool and sat down. Lady Celestina, are those people shrine maidens and priests? Yes, that's right. Jissel was looking at the priests and priestesses at the reception. They were dressed in blue, red, green, and brown clothes respectively. Celestina began to explain to Jissel who was full of curiosity. The people here wear the colors of the spirit that blesses them. Spirits? Yes. The people with the blessings of the spirit of water wear blue. Red for the spirit of fire, green for wind, and brown for earth. If you look closely you will see that they have their seal embroidered on the cuffs of their sleeves. Jissel nodded after looking at the same. I want to get my blessings quickly too. It's interesting isn't it? Celestina smiled at the excited Jissel. I'm looking forward to it too. I'm excited since the first person from my village will be receiving their blessings. I may not be able to sleep tonight. Celestina was also super excited. Their names were soon called. Thank you for waiting. I'll be registering you so please state the name of your village and the name of the person going to participate in the ceremony. Yes. Selen village from the kingdom of Albert. The one taking the ceremony is called Jisil. The shrine maiden filled in the name and the other information. Selen village eats the one that was recently created right? Yes. It's the first for a child from the village to participate in this ceremony. She knew about the existence of Selen village and seemed to have a good opinion. Celestina came to like the Great Shrine more. Backquote I was a little scared of the Great Shrine, but that wasn't necessary at all. Since she didn't have any blessings, it was difficult to enter the shrines, especially the Great Shrine. However, after coming here she felt that it wasn't such a big deal. Backquote Jisel ceremony is the most important today. May the gods and goddesses bless the first child of Selin village with their blessings. The ceremony begins from 10 a.m. tomorrow so please don't be late. The ceremony will take place in the hall on the third floor. Yes, thank you also. This is a contribution from our hearts so please accept it. Thank you for your consideration. After learning the schedule for the next day, Celestina handed over a bag of money. With this the procedure for the ceremony was complete. After the procedure for the ceremony for complete, Celestina took Hisu and went to Sora Tech's room. She wanted to discuss the plans hereafter. Back quote in order to investigate my blessings. She didn't know whether she would find out or not. But the Great Shrine was the only thing that she could rely on. Sora Tech invited her in and even prepared some tea for her. Thank you Lord Sora Tech. Are the procedures complete? Yes. Celestina nodded and Sora Tech smiled happily. Tomorrow the whole day will go into the ceremony, so we'll only get the time day after tomorrow afternoon. The day after tomorrow afternoon right? All right. Back quote I'm nervous, whether I really have blessings or not, I'll probably get a no here. Although she may end up finding out that she doesn't have blessings after all. It was her favorite game plus it was about herself, and yet there were so many things that she didn't know. Sora Tech might have noticed Celestina's feelings that's why he came and sat next to her on the sofa. It will be fine, I'm sure that you're anxious, but point I'm here with you. 
you'll be attending the ceremony of blessings tomorrow, so I'll research about blessings at the library. Lord Sora Tech Point I'm sorry that you have to waste your precious time for this Celestina was really apologetic that she was wasting his precious time, but it was actually the opposite, I'm really glad to spend time with you like this. Maybe it's not really right to say this, but I'm happy to come for a long distance trip with you Cell. Lord Sora Tech, you also don't get many opportunities to leave the royal castle right. Point that's right. Sora Tech nodded to Celesna while thinking that that wasn't the case. He wasn't able to convey to her properly that he was happy to go out with her. Well, it's fine. We still have the return journey. Return journey? No, it's nothing. Sora Tech drank his tea and wondered about the approach that he should adopt. The next day it was time for the ceremony. Celestina went with Anton and Gisel to the ceremonial hall. Adet and Hisu waited behind. The ceremonial hall was on the third floor without any windows. The hall was lit with magical tools. There were statues of gods, goddesses, and spirits in the front and the space to hold the ceremony. Chairs for the attendees were lined up at the back. There were about 30 children including Gisel attending the ceremony. Moreover, this was just the first ceremony of the day so there were still children waiting in line. Backquote is expected of the Great Shrine. Several children from each of the countries have gathered here. The children were very excited, since it was a joyful moment to receive the blessings. There was a lot of buzzing around but no one seemed extremely nervous. Jissel was holding Anten's hand and she didn't seem to be nervous. Backquote, maybe I'm the most nervous here. She tried to calm her racing heart as she took in a deep breath. A long high toned sound echoed inside the hall and the priest entered. The ceremony was starting. Priest and priestesses in blue, red, green, and brown clothing were going to perform the ceremony. Children, come forward. Yes. Starting with Jisel, all the children stepped forward. Celestina and Anton anxiously wished her the best and sent her off. The priest slash priestess in charge of the ceremony had with them a prayer book that was only accessible to them. The book contained words that allowed them to communicate with the gods, goddesses, and spirits. By chanting those words a seal of blessings would appear. Celestina wondered about the details as she watched the priests slash priestesses. While playing the game she didn't care about that at all. However, when it comes to reality, the mechanisms are often complicated and unknown. Backquote but I don't understand it at all. There are a lot of things that she didn't know. Even though she was the lord right now, she didn't research on it since she didn't have any blessings. No, she did investigate it, but she didn't know why she didn't have any blessings. Lady so looks like it's about to start. Ah, that's right. Hisu came next to her and looked ahead at the shrine maiden holding the ceremony with great interest. The shrine maiden who had the names of the blessings was wearing a robe with the moon embroidered on it. She had the blessings of the moon god Mani. I serve the god of the moon Mani. I pray that all the children on this land receive the blessings and their seal. With the words of the shrine maiden, the priest and priestesses folded their hands in a prayer position and began to pray. The children followed along, praying that they receive the blessings of the god slash goddesses and the spirits. The spirit of water that carries spring, the spirit of fire that nurtures its growth and strengthens it, kindness and thoughtfulness with the spirit of wind, that gives you peace and the spirit of the earth, that gives up the tribulation. We pray to thee. Reading the incantation, the shrine maiden rang the bell that she had in her hand. Please bestow the seal on the children. At the end of her statement, the bodies of the children praying are wrapped in a faint light. Blue light wraps those 
that receive the blessings from the spirit of water, red for the spirit of fire, green for the spirit of fire, and brown for the spirit of the earth. There are lots of children so there is lots of light. Yes, that's true. Giselles, ah, she's wrapped in brown light. Looks like she has been blessed by the spirit of the earth. Celestina placed her hand on her chest in relief that Gisel received her blessings smoothly. She had heard that people were enveloped in colorless light if they were being blessed by the gods. It was judged that Celestina was not blessed since she didn't glow at all and there was no sign. As the children returned back to the attendants, Celestina and the others welcomed Gisel. I received blessings from the spirit of the earth. We are glad that it went on without any glitches. Congratulations Gisel. Thank you, Grandpa Anton. With this, I can grow a lot in the fields of the village right. Gisel seemed to have wanted the blessings of the spirit that would help the soil for the sake of the village. Celestina's heart felt warm seeing it materialize. Backquote Gisel is a really good girl. Congratulations Gisel. Thank you. I'll my best for the village. Yes, I look forward to it. Seeing Gisel so incredibly happy, Celestina couldn't help but feel happier. Congratulations Gisel. Sister Redette, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Odette who was waiting at the back extended her wishes and Hisu followed after. The shrine maiden soon requested them all to leave the hall. There were still many children waiting for the ceremony, so they had to begin preparations for the next one. Celestina and the others left the ceremonial hall. The ceremony was safely over, and Anton and Gisel headed back the village first. They would now be investigating Celestina's blessings after this so Celestina, Hisu, Adet Soratek with his entourage were left behind. The would be able to speak to the people of the Great Shrine from noon tomorrow, so they were free until then. Celestina returned to her room with Hisu and Adet, and informed them of her schedule for the day. I would like to look around for a bit, since we are finally at the Great Shrine. This place is not dangerous so both of you don't need to attend to me. I'm Lady Cell's butler, so I'll go with you. Me, me too. Celestina smiled at the toe of them who felt that it was only natural for them to be with her. Backquote I was thinking about completing the quests of the Great Shrine though. She was wondering what to do. It was obviously not a problem if the two of them were with her but they might wonder about why she was doing certain things. They may get slightly suspicious of her, or they may not. Backquote well, let's see. They were doing a favor to her, so she would accept it wholeheartedly. Then let us all look around together. We'll be attending the blessing ceremonies in the small shrine in the country hereafter, so we may not be coming here again. Yes. Adet and Hisu energetically replied to Celestina's words. There were several quests that she could do now. The first one that she would take up was praying at the shrine. It was a simple quest that required her to pray at the prayer hall on the first floor. I would like to pray first. It's generally open during the day so anyone can use the prayer hall. WAA, the atmosphere is really solemn. A debt gave her impression after seeing the prayer hall. It was unlike the ceremonial hall with light flooding in through the stained glass. The structure was similar to a church with chairs prepared for those that wished to sit and pray. Celestina sat down and began to slowly pray. Backquote please make my tree grow splendidly and make the village prosper. Please make it a bigger town. She wanted to be greedier but this was all that she would say. Lady Cell, what are you praying for? Point I'm praying for the health of the people in the village. She smiled and replied to Hisu's question. It wasn't a lie, since the prosperity of the village included the health of the villagers, Celestina confirmed within her heart. 
Let's ask the priest and the shrine maiden to pray for Cell in village next. For the village, thank you Lady Cell. It was for the quest, but a debt was touched. Celestina smiled and said back quote of course. When you get the priest slash shrine maiden to pray for you, the yield of the harvest will increase. It was a very useful quest for managing territory. Back quote once it's over, a dazzling quest would be over. There were others as well, but they were quite difficult to implement. For example, touching the great tree of the shrine. Reading the prayer book that no one other the priest or shrine maidens can read. The game truly ended when the withered great tree hidden deep within the shrine was sealed. Sora Tech and the heroine combined their powers in the game to seal it, and bring about the ending. She suddenly realized. Backquote if Lord Sora Tech and the heroine don't get together then this world might probably end. That's a huge problem. It was at a completely different scale compared to the ending, where Celestina kills Sora Tech and the heroine, and then kills herself. It really wasn't a good idea, to let Lord Sora Tech come along right. It would have been better, if he had stayed back in the country, and fostered his relationship with the heroine. Celestina was regretting it now. Lady Cell, is something the matter? Hisu asked Celestina who seemed worried about something. Celestina shook her head no, and didn't give away anything. I'll do the procedure, to get the priest and shrine maiden to pray so please wait a bit. Thank you. Celestina sighed in relief, after expressing thanks to the receptionist. Back quote with this, I will complete the quests, that I can do right now. She wanted to complete the other ones as well, but it was difficult to do, even if she were to use her titles like Lord, the Marquis's daughter, or the Crown Prince's fiancé. Thanks to the game, she knew the geography, if the inside of the temple very well, so it would be easy to sneak in, but the chances of her getting caught were high. Backquote especially the place with the great tree or the prayer book. Those places have a lot of priests slash shrine maidens there, if there was a possibility then it was probably the place with the last boss. The basement of the shrine. Backquote it's not something that I can do, but I can probably at least check the place out, right? Okay, let's do that. There probably wouldn't be another opportunity, to come to the great shrine, so she decided to look around properly. At midnight there wouldn't be many people here, and she could hide well on the way to the basement. Originally she was in love with this game, so she would really like to see this with her own eyes. It would be fulfilling. Thank you for waiting. Lady Celestina, the preparations for the prayer are complete. I'll guide you in. Yes. It was on the first floor in the blessing room next to the prayer hall. The priest guided her in, and she found a shrine maiden waiting for her inside. I serve the sun god, Saul. Nice to meet you, I'm Angi. Celestina bowed and Hisu and Adet followed. Let's start the prayer. Angi ran the bell in her, and after saying that, it was the same sound like the one in the ceremony of blessings. A clear and beautiful sound. When Celestina came here a long time back, her father told her that it was rung, in order to let the gods know about their whereabouts. The sound of the bell rang, and Ngi opened the prayer book. Backquota, this quest uses that book too. She thought that it was only used at the ceremony of blessings. She was happy that she had more opportunities to see it compared to what she had believed. Perhaps she would even get a chance to read it. I serve the sun god Saul. I pray for your blessings for the living. Please bestow your blessings and mercy on to sell and village in the kingdom of Albert. Angi extended out the prayer and closed the book. A pillar of faint light extended up to heaven and disappeared. The prayer completed safely. The prayer is over. Thank you very much. It took only about 10 minutes. The payment for the prayer is 10 million luz. 
there was no way that Selin village could pay that kind of money right now, so it went from Selesina's pocket. She intended to collect it, once the village developed further. After Ngi left the room, Selesina decided to return back to her room. She wanted to quickly check the Asgeral system, so it couldn't be helped. Asgeral system, start up, Selesina returned to her room alone. Hisu and Odette would be coming soon as well. She immediately activated the Asgeral system screen. Selesina Rinklet Great Tree owned, level 5 Guardian Beast, Toy Territory owned, Albert Kingdom, Rinklet Territory District 2 People. 18 Great Tree Skill Fertility Blessings Level 3, Vegetation grows well in a 5 km radius around the Great Tree and soil quality has improved. Sweet Nectar, Level 2, The Great Tree emits a sweet scent and attracts butterflies and bees. Up. Blessings of the Amulet Level 2, No Monsters Come Within 3 km of the Great Tree. Territory Named, Yield Increases Specialty of the Village. The recognition of the village increases. One hit KO. Attack power increases new. Donation heart. The shrine shop is available new. Child of the territory. The physical strength of the people in the village increases new. Prayer heart. The endurance of the people in the village increases new. Blessings of the shrine. Yield of the harvest increases few for I got the skills. That I had expected. Selesina couldn't hold back her smile. She got the donation heart when she applied for Jissel's blessings ceremony. The child of the territory was acquired when Jissel attended the ceremony of blessings and received her seal. The prayer heart was acquired when she prayed at the prayer hall. And finally, she gained the blessings of the shrine when she got a prayer done by the shrine maiden. This time the results would be good for the people of the village, so Selesina expected a basic improvement. Since their physical strength would increase, they wouldn't tire so easily. Increased endurance simply meant that they would be difficult to poison, and they wouldn't catch colds that easily. It was a very convenient skill, so she was glad that she remembered the method to gain it. The shrine shop was slightly unfamiliar but it wasn't something that she was concerned about. This was the great shrine that was in the center with each country surrounding it. Each country also had its own smaller shrine. You could shop in any of these. Normally the shop could only be used by priests or shrine maidens, but once you gained this skill, players could use it as well. The temple sells unique things. For example, they sell a bell that the shrine maiden uses and other ornaments. They sell books on the gods, goddesses, and the spirits. They also sell water blessed by the spirits, not holy water. I think it would be a good idea to buy books on the gods, goddesses, and spirits right. If she were to buy it and keep it in Selin village, the children could read it and study. That may increase their future options. Perhaps some children may decide that they want to become shrine maidens or priests. Right now, there was one great shrine in the center of this world, and one small shrine in each kingdom. However, if you could develop to a territory, there could be an event where you could build a shrine. As expected, I don't remember all the details in the loop. Let's go to the shrine shop tomorrow. Fortunately, the meeting with the shrine was in the afternoon so there was sufficient time to go shopping in the morning. Nighttime, Selesina had gone to bed early in order to wake up in the middle of the night. It's really silent. Earlier the ceremony of blessings was going on and you could hear the chatter of the children. However, right now it was really quiet. Back quote if it's right now, is it fine, if go to the basement of the shrine to check it out? That was the place where the fight with the last boss, was to take place, but there were no enemies or traps on the way. That's why there was no problem, if she were to go and come back. She didn't really expect to defeat, and seal the last boss or anything. Back quote I want to acquire the skill, 
that I can receive once I clear the kill the great tree quests. It was impossible for a Valenus like her. Celestina understood that better than anyone else. She changed out of her negligee into her usual rose red dress and left the room. The heroine was blessed by the god of fertility free which is very useful for growing the great tree and managing the territory. Once she married Zora Tech and became the queen the surrounding area obviously received those blessings in trust. However, that incident took place. The phenomenon where the cherished great tree died. The country fell into anxiety and despair. At that time the heroine restored the great tree with the power of her blessings. The cause of the withering is then determined, and it is sealed with the help of Soratek. Well, that is the last. As expected, there is no one here at midnight. Carefreely she walked to the corridor, went down the staircase to the first floor. The hidden passage to the basement was hidden behind the statue of the god in the prayer hall. The passage wouldn't open without the secret password and there weren't many people who were aware of the word. The problem was whether the prayer hall was open. The hall was open during the day so that anyone could freely enter, but it was closed in the night, just as she had expected. The key to the door would probably be with the priests so there was nothing that she could do about it. She reached the prayer hall while she was thinking of all this. She reached out to the closed door pushed at it. The door opened. Ah. She had expected it to be locked but it wasn't. She let out the sound in surprise. When she looked closely, there was no keyhole. A-H-H-I-C. Permission was needed in order to enter during the time of ceremonies or blessings. But this place was a prayer hall and anyone could freely enter to pray so there was no reason for it to have a lock. She remembered that the anxious heroine prays at the prayer hall in the middle of the night in the game event. Obviously the capture target comes along and comforts her. That was the setting. She slowly peeked in to ensure that no one was inside. Sorry for intruding. She entered the prayer hall softly as she could. It wasn't a no entry zone. So she wasn't really doing anything wrong she thought as an afterthought. She folded her hands and prayed, and then went around behind the statue of the god. The password was. May the grace of the great tree bless the earth. The moment Celestina said that there was a sound in the pedestal of the statue opened to reveal a staircase. If she were to go down these stairs then she would reach the basement of the great shrine. Back quote thank god, it seems that I can enter it as well. Just in case she looked around once again to check if there was anyone around, and then she began to go down the staircase. The basement of the great shrine had a cobblestone flooring, and a simple brock wall. It was vastly different from the stained glass and marble of the upper floors. Perhaps it was due to the fact that this was the basement, but it felt like the temperature had dropped by a few degrees. It was chilly. It's still autumn, so the temperature outside is still good. You wouldn't generally feel cold inside a building in this weather. Considering that this was the great shrine in the center of this world, it was quite a disappointment. Back quote well. It's not like I expect them to spend money on such things though after Celestina walked down the straight road for about 10 minutes, she saw a door. It was wrapped in layers with heavy chains and was sealed. Celestina certainly did not think that it was fine to open it. No one other than the heroine could seal it back, so she would only look at it and return. Back quote come to think of it, the last boss's figure isn't clearly drawn in the game. She only remembered a low voice saying, I'll kill all the great trees. After hearing that voice, she had closed the open door without looking inside and sealed it. What exactly was sealed behind this door? If she were to think of it from the point of view of a game then it would probably be the Demon King. She hadn't heard of his existence or anything but, since there were monsters in this game, it wouldn't be too surprising. Back quote I mean he has enough power 
to destroy the great trees so there was certainly an incredible monster or something like that sealed inside here. She was suddenly frightened. She did check that it was properly sealed, but in case it were to go wild, the heroine, Miria, and Sora Tech would certainly seal it back. Just as Celestina was about to return. Who is it? A low voice called out. She was startled by the sudden voice and lost her balance. She was frozen in place. She never expected to hear a voice coming from behind the door. Back quote what should I do? She was sure that the owner of the voice was the last boss. The voice was low and carried intimidation. It felt like the surrounding air had frozen. Well, it's fine. It's not like I can get out of this place or anything. Even if someone was there, it wasn't like he had some bow or some weapon. His words seemed to carry that nuance. Celestina felt strange hearing words like that coming from him. Backquote he is the last boss right? Who? Who are you? I'm surprised that a woman had come here. Who? Are you going to tell me honestly? Last boss replied in a very normal way to Celestina's voice. There wasn't any conversation with the last boss in the game that's why Celestina's heart was really pounding right now. Celestina didn't know whether she should reply or not, so she kept her mouth shut. Well, it's fine. The back quote last boss seemed to say, since you've come here, is it power that you desire? She was frightened at those evil words full of temptation. At the same time, she felt that he was surely the last boss. He would give power in exchange for something. It was a hand that a Valene would usually use. Well, Celestina was a Valenus, so it wasn't like she was the ally of justice or anything. Even so, her reply was decided. I don't need the power of evil. Point evil? A neat voice responded to Celestina's cool words. Backquote. HN. Celestina inclined her head sign the reply was not what she had expected. Normally, the reply should be something like, I'll give you the power that you want. Then make some kind of contract with her, and ask her to lift the seal on the door. Or something like that. Aren't you evil? Then are you a monster that can speak? You aren't a shrine maiden of the goddess. Why do you respond to a question with a question? She was annoyed, since she didn't get her desired replies. But the other party was the last boss. It wouldn't be good to provoke him too much. A shrine maiden of the goddess is someone that is blessed by a goddess right? I'm not a shrine maiden. The titles of the priests and shrine maidens change according to the god or goddess that blesses them. If they are blessed by the spirits then they are called priests or shrine maidens. However, if they are blessed by the sun god Sol or the moon goddess Mani, they are either called the shrine maiden of blessings, or a priest of blessings. If they are blessed by a god or goddess, that only blesses one single person then they are either called the priest slash shrine maiden of the god slash goddess. This is the ranking system. The head is the chief of the great shrine. The ones that head the smaller shrines are known as the grand priest and shrine maiden. The moment Celestina spoke about herself, an outsider? A cold voice called out. Ah, oops. She accidentally told him that she was an intruder. This place is only known to a limited number of upper management and some people related to the great shrine, so it might be a problem that she knew about it. Point I'm not blaming you or anything. Hey, really? Celestina was relieved. He was a good person, even though he was the last boss. Who are you exactly? A human. There was no way that that was possible. Why was he confined in such a place? What was the great shrine planning to do? In the first place, this was not a permissible act towards a human being. If you were guilty, you deserve to receive a proper trial. Hey, who are you? She asked once again but there was no answer. 
It seemed like he wasn't going to answer this question. Back quote it isn't good for me to get too involved. That much is obvious but they only had a small conversation. But she couldn't help but remember his humane words. I'm Celestina point Celestina Rinklet. You're the one with no blessings right? Uh, yes, yes that's right. She didn't expect him to know about her. She was a little upset. I'm hell. A. Name. I know that much. He was so quiet about it that she was surprised that he actually told her. Celestina held back her sigh and asked hell. Hey, you seem like a normal person. When I speak to you, why are you in such a place? Because I'm shy. That's a lie. Celestina instinctively answered without thought. If it was the truth then he was the ultimate shy. For him to be in this kind of a place, where no one would come and no one would know about him. Celestina let out an amazed sigh and hell laughed from behind the door. You're an interesting girl. That might be the first time someone has told me that. You're also pretty strange though. F you you. Well it's fine. It will be dawn soon. Someone will come here. She panicked as she realized that so much time had passed. She might certainly be found out by the shrine people. But she had to confirm something before she left. Hey, hell. What is it? You're confined here aren't you? Do you wish to go out? Maybe he was sealed here, since he had the power to destroy the great trees. She didn't know whether he could use the power at present, but he was the last boss in the game so there was a chance that he may go out of control. That's why Celestina wanted to know his thoughts. No way. I told you right. I'm shy. It's fine for me to be isolated here. Really? Yeah, I get my three meals and an app right. F you you. Hey don't make me laugh. By his words, she felt that he didn't really desire to go outside. Back quote anyway isn't it good, that he isn't like the last boss for now. Anyhow, there was no way, that Celestina could take him out right now. She could certainly take him with her, but they would soon be caught. It was better to check things out for the time being, and pay attention to the progression of the game. Back quote but I think it would be better to interact with the temple. If she could get along with them then she would be informed, if something were to happen. Maybe hell wouldn't turn into the last boss in that case. Hey, if you don't go back soon, breakfast will come. Understood. I'll come back. See you hell. Yeah. After saying a light farewell, Celestina went back to her room. H.A.A. Celestina returned back to her room carefully, ensuring that no one would notice her. She entered her room, and crouched down with her back to the door. Back quote what was that? What was that? What was that? She only planned to check the Demon King out for a bit and return quickly, but she never imagined. That she would ever meet a person like hell. That setting wasn't a part of the game. After sealing the existence that kills the great tree, peace would return to the world. That's why she had assumed that the opponent was something like a monster or something like that. Was the last boss of the game actually hell whose ego had collapsed? If that was the case, she wanted to do something to save him. However... Celestina had no power right now. She did have her status as the Marquis's daughter, but that was of no help. She had to come up with some measure before the heroine sealed him in with the help of Soratech. A-H-H. There are too many things to do. The hell right now seemed fine, so she would focus on the things that needed her immediate attention. Right now the most important thing was the talk about her blessings in the afternoon. But let's sleep for a little bit before that. She fluttered to the bed and fell into it. I'm really sorry Prince Soratek. No, don't mind it. She's probably tired from the unusual trip. Let her rest well. 
Thank you. Through her vague consciousness, Celestina heard a voice and she opened her eyes. After blinking a few times Odette's gentle voice greeted her a good morning. She expected to wake up at her usual time, but she had unexpectedly fallen into a deep slumber. Good morning Odette. Backquote I heard Lord Soratek's voice too. When she opened the door to check, there was no one outside right now. He was probably being considerate, since Celestina was sleeping. He must have come to invite her for breakfast. Celestina had done something wrong. Prince Soratek had come a little while back. When I told him that you were still sleeping he asked me to let you rest. He's really kind isn't he? Thank you for the response, Adette. I did something wrong to Lord Soratek. Celestina who had lost her sleep, sighed, and got up from the bed. Ah did you wake up before this? This was what she had accidentally forgotten. Celestina had changed into her rose red dress while going out, and she fell asleep without changing back. She had properly changed into her negligee last night and Adette who had helped her dress into it obviously remembered it. She was most likely curious as to what had happened. There was no way that she could honestly tell Adette that she had sneaked into the basement of the Great Shrine in the middle of the night. However, if she were to give a complete lie point it would probably turn into a mess later. Actually, my eyes opened early in the morning. That's why I went to the open prayer hall to pray. Today is the day we find out more about my blessings right. I just wanted to calm down somehow. So that's what it was. Lady Celestina is so enthusiastic that we the villagers are very happy. After you're done washing I'll do your hair. Thank you. She had somehow managed to mislead Adette about the reason for her wearing the dress. Celestina began to prepare. After having a light breakfast Celestina took Hisu to the shrine store with her. It wasn't in a special location or anything. You just had to go to the reception and call out to the priest and ask him to show you the merchandise. Good day. We would like to shop. Certainly. The priest handed over the merchandise list to Celestina. He would bring out the items after she had selected them from the list. So you can shop at the shrine. It's not very well known. She was looking over the list with Hisu. The list of the merchandise was smaller than she had expected. Blessed Water keeps demons away the shrine story book. It depicts the information regarding the shrine and the blessings the priest's bell used during prayer the shrine maiden's bell used during prayer preserved food. Delicious dried food meat Celestina was thinking about buying the shrine story and keeping it at Aunt Hen's home in the village. The bell was just an ornament of decoration without any special use, so it wasn't really necessary. Celestina decided to purchase the blessed water and the book. Please give me one shrine story book and three bottles of the blessed water. Thank you. The blessed water is 10,000 luz per bottle and the book is 3,000 luz. The total will be 13,000 luz. As expected of the great shrine. It was certainly expensive. However, only the priests and the shrine maidens could make the blessed water, so it was obvious that it would be expensive. It was mostly used during trips and staying at inns. Backquote it's fine right now, because we have Lord Soratek's escort knights, but it would be better to have it just in case. Hisu please make the payment. Yes. She left the payment to Hisu and took the goods. She was interested in the book. When she glanced through it, she found that it contained the fact that the spirits and the gods created this world and what kind of powers the blessings hold. Regretfully, it didn't mention anything about that blessing that Celestina had. Backquote well, if it was written in this book then I wouldn't have a hard time. Celestina returned back to her room with Hisu, and decided to prepare for the discussions with the temple, the shrine in the center of the world, the one sitting at the top of the great shrine, 
the chief of the great shrine was considered to be equal to the kings of each country or perhaps even higher than them. There were two reasons for that. The shrine was a place where lots of priests and shrine maidens that were blessed by the gods were gathered. The chief possessed the strongest blessings out of all of those people. Right now Celestina was about to meet that person. The room that they were waiting in was the reception room on the third floor. Soratek and Celestina were sitting next to each other and Hisu, Soratek's aide Wilfred and a civilian named Emilio were waiting behind them. Backquote I'm nervous. Celestina anxiously drank the tea that was prepared. She was anxious about what was to happen hereafter. She wanted to know about the blessings that she possessed. But would the shrine be able to investigate that? The seal of blessings had emerged in Celestina's left eye at that time, but right now there was none. It wouldn't be strange to think that they were lying. Sal, don't worry. I'm here with you. Lord Soratek, thank you. It's very encouraging. Soratek smiled gently at Celestina and explained the setup. The seal that emerged in your left eye is drawn here so let the chief see that first. After that let the chief check whether Celestina truly does possess blessings or not. Yes. Since this had already been discussing in advance, Celestina had no objection. Backquote even if we don't conclude whether I have blessings or not I would really like to know what that blessing was. There was a knock on the door. Hisu opened the door after Sorotek nodded. Sorry for making you wait. Celestina and the others stood up to pay their respects to the person that had just entered. Thank you for giving us some of your time, even though you're so busy. I'm the crown prince of the Albert Kingdom, Soratek Lily Albert. I'm Celestina Rinklet. The chief smiled softly and sat down on the sofa. I'm a Lucaria Asgeral, the chief of the Great Shrine. I'm happy to be able to meet both of you today under the guidance of the gods. The head of the Great Shrine in the world was Lucaria Asgeral. Lucaria was a little older than Celestina with a beautifully structured face and features that would steal a lot of gazes. Lucaria had silky blonde hair that extended down to the shoulder and was tied back with a tie with some hair in the front framing the face. The seal of blessings was visible through the loose hair framing Lucaria's face that was parted in the center. Lucaria wore a white hat and a white robe with a long hem with golden embroidery and black accents, to accentuate the solemn look. The smiling face deserved to be called the face of a saint. I heard that you're here, to know more about the blessings. It's rather quick, but can I have to give me the details? Of course. Soratek nodded at Lucaria's request, and explained the events that unfolded at the village that day. The person blessed by the god of fertility free caused a black flower to bloom on the great tree which changed to white once Celestina touched it. At that time, Celestina's rose pink left eye turned baby pink and there was a seal that emerged in it. This is a drawing of the seal that emerged at that time. Let me see it. Soratek took the paper with the drawing on it from Emilio and handed it over to Lucaria. They had searched the records for some information on it before this, but they didn't find anything. Not only had they searched the records of their country, but even the records of the library at the Great Shrine. The only other option was to ask a priest in a high position. Did Lucaria who was staring at the image with great concentration know anything about the seal? Backquote I can't tell them that I saw some selection choices. There was no way that Celestina could tell them that she had the power to choose her fate in that moment. Not only did she not know how the shrine would react, but she also didn't know that kind of person Lucaria was either. In the worst case, there was a possibility that the shrine may try to use her for her power. Celestina watched Lucaria deeply, in order to gain some kind of understanding of the personality of the person sitting in front of her. 
However, Lucaria suddenly looked up to meet her eyes. It was so sudden that Celestina almost let out a surprised sound. She hadn't expected Lucaria to look up to her. Lucaria laughed at Celestina's reaction and told her, I don't bite you no. I have to conclude that this is the first time that I saw such a seal. Is that so Soratek's shoulders slumped at the response that went against his hopes. There are several gods in this world, so it is quite possible that no one has been blessed by many of them yet. As the crown prince, you are aware of that right? Yes, of course. After all, there are only a few in Albert that are blessed by a god. That's right. That's why there is no need to be worried, even if you don't know. Lucaria stood up and slowly came next to Celestina and extended a hand out, as if to escort her. Please show me the blessings that you received Lady Celestina. My blessings? Yes. Even though I'm young, I'm the chief of the Great Shrine. I can feel whether a person is blessed or not, and also the size of their blessings. Lucaria laughed saying that it wasn't something to be frightened by. Backquote the chief of the great shrine can even do something like that, amazing. Since Celestina now knew what Lucaria intended to do, she took the hand offered to her. Even Lucaria's hands were delicate and beautiful. Lucaria's hand touched both of Celestina's hands and those golden eyes looked deeply at Celestina. Right from the top of her head to the feet. Point my heart is racing. The fact that you don't have blessings the shrine that concluded that must apologize to you. A. In response to Lucaria's quiet declaration, Celestina raised her head. The fact that they must apologize to her meant that they had made a mistake in their judgment. Lady Celestina. Ye, yes. I want to check this out in greater detail so can you please close your eyes? Point yes. Celestina nodded and closed her eyes at Lucaria's gentle request. Pat something touched Celestina's forehead gently and softly. However, since Celestina had her eyes closed she didn't know what it was. She felt a warmth that caused her body to lose its strength and let loose. Celestina could hear Lucarius' faint breath. Ah, you've received blessings from a goddess. Celestina inadvertently opened her eyes when she heard those words and felt a vibration on her lips. Lucarius' beautiful face was right in front of her eyes. He was so close to her that it was about kissing distance. Celestina inhaled sharply. What was he about to do? Don't worry I'm not about to do anything to you. Since I'm still young, I don't understand many things, if I don't touch my seal to it. Ah, to my head yes, that's right. Lucaria had only touched the seal on his forehead to her head. Celestina was embarrassed that she had been so restless for a moment there. I should have told you what I was about to do. I'm sorry Lady Celestina. No, I was just arbitrarily surprised, thank you for looking at the seal. Celestina lowered her head and expressed her gratitude and Lucaria smiled saying, thank god. Other than the fact that she does indeed have blessings, do you have any other concrete information? Soratek asked about the result, once Celestina sat back down on the sofa next to him. Celestina was curious as well and wanted to hear it quickly. She stared at Lucaria as she waited for his answer, but he quietly shook his head. I don't know the name or details, but I do know that she was blessed by a goddess. Blessed by a goddess. Soratek's voice was the loudest in response to Lucaria's judgment. Soratek held Celestina's hand and said, that's great. You've always been concerned about the fact that you didn't receive any blessings right. You refrained from going out so as to not trouble your family and you were even worried that you weren't an appropriate fianc for me. I wanted to make you happy, 
but I never knew what to do, in order to do so, ahh, I can't explain it well but anyway, congratulations cell. Thank you a lord saw attack. Celestina realized by his words, that he had been really worried about her. Back quote even if he likes the heroine, I'm still his childhood friend. She was convinced, that that was the reason, that he worried about her. She decided to support his relationship with the heroine fully as an apology. Miria didn't have appropriate education for a lady, but Celestina could always act like a villainess, and teach her while bullying her. With that, they would surely reach the happy ending. Back quote point, but, right now we are in the midst of discussing my blessings. After Soratek congratulated her, she checked once again, whether she really was blessed. She was always known as the one with no blessings and even called that, but that would not be the case here after. Back quote I don't know about the kind of blessings I have, but I do know that I'm blessed. Thank you for all your help Lord Lucaria. I'm surprised, since I never expected to have received the blessings of a goddess. After all this is as much as I can do. However, since we don't know what kind of blessings you possess, I'm deeply curious. A goddess that can change the color of a flower, maybe she has to do either with the plants slash vegetation, forests, earth, or fertility, etc. Lucaria also told them to investigate the shrine archives once more. We also have an archive here that can only be accessed by priests and shrine maidens. Many books in there are not accessible to the general public and hence not kept in the other library which is open to the public. Of course, there was a possibility that there would be no clue even there, but the possibility of finding a clue there was the highest. Celestina and the others, however, could only check the library open to the public. I'm really sorry to ask this of you, the chief of the great shrine, but I would really be so glad if you could help me out. Please do help us out. Celestina requested the chief and Soratek continued after. Please don't be so formal. After all, I'm also very curious about the blessings that change the color of the flower. Lord Lucaria point thank you. Even though he was the chief of the great shrine, he wasn't high and mighty. On the contrary, he even gave a follow up, so that we don't feel worried. Back quote what a nice person. Celestina smiled softly. Ah, that's right. Lucaria said. If we go to the flowers of the great tree, we may be able to see that power in use. Lady Celestina, would you go with me? A. That's point of course at Lucaria's suggestion. Celestina's thoughts about him were frozen. To put it simply, it wasn't easy to see the great tree of the great shrine. In fact, going to see the blooming flowers was not something that could possibly be done. Back quote it should be fine, since the chief is with us though. If Celestina and Soratek had decided to go alone then they may have been stopped by the priest or they may have even been imprisoned. That's the kind of strict vigilance that they maintained. Shall we go? Kai away, Lord Lucaria. Lucaria got up from his seat excitedly, took Celestina's hand to take her along, and began to walk ahead. Soratek chased after them, and called out to him. As expected, he didn't intend to allow anyone to go that far with his fianke. Celestina is my fianke so please refrain from such behavior. Ah, come to think of it, that's right. I was just really excited to see the power of the goddess. I'm still young, so I have poor control over my emotions, I apologize. No, I just need your consideration. The moment Lucaria let go of Celestina's hand, Soratek immediately held it, in order to escort her. The great tree of the great shrine was planted in the center of the circular building, that was the great shrine. The great tree was actually in the so-called courtyard, but that area was off limits for the normal public, 
and it could only be accessed by the staircase on the 4th and 5th floors. Moreover, it was difficult to see the great tree. As they walked down the corridor, Celestina remembered that there was a skill that she could acquire by touching the tree. Backquote the skill that you acquire by touching the great tree is an increase in the growth rate of your great tree. She definitely wanted that skill, so the events that just took place were surprisingly very lucky. The chief was also not too formal and he even confirmed that she was indeed blessed. These windows are placed on the 4th and 5th floor that overlooks the great tree. Can you see the tree? You are. When Celestina looked out of the window that Luke Carrier pointed at, she saw the great tree that was situated at the center of this world. The tree had deep green leaves on a thick trunk. The florets in bloom were scattered all over in gentle shades of peach, yellow, and orange. While Celestina and the others were busy appreciating the tree, Lucaria laughed happily. The priests and the shrine maiden have raised it with tremendous care. Of course me too. I never expected to see the great tree of the great shrine, so I'm deeply moved. The tree is more than double the size of the great tree of Albert. The great tree of Albert grew within the premises of the royal castle, and it was raised by the royal family. Each country grew its own great tree and that would be the biggest great tree in that country. Celestina had seen it before, and she could only term it as a masterpiece. Backquote but this tree is even bigger. She had seen it in the game before, but it was truly amazing to see it in real life. Come this way. They accompanied Lucaria to the spiral staircase, that would take them to the courtyard. Unless you took this staircase, you couldn't reach the base of the great tree. Please be careful, since a long stairway. Yes. Watching Lucaria carefully move forward, the others followed along. Celestina felt a slight sting on her skin when she crossed the doorway. It was probably some kind of a barrier or something that had been erected to protect the great tree. They went down the spiral staircase from the fourth floor and reached the great tree. If she were to touch the great tree here then she would acquire the skill. But they had to verify the power of Celestina's blessings before that. They were going to see whether her power would get triggered by coming here. Lucaria was full of expectation, but Celestina internally felt that it would probably be impossible. Backquote because my power is the power to change my fate right now there was no situation that called for her to change her fate. Therefore there was no reason for her to use her power. Moreover, Celestina didn't know how to use her power. Of course, she would be happy if there was some kind of progress that could take place. Lady Celestina, did you feel something change after you saw the great tree? For example, the feeling of your power within you, or any strange sensations in the eye where the seal emerges? Point unfortunately no, even though Lucaria had asked her, Celestina couldn't feel any change. Then let's go closer to the tree. Please be careful of your feet. The flooring of the courtyard was not paved at all. It was lined with soft vegetation. It had lovely flowers growing with beautiful butterflies fluttering around it. It surrounded the great tree and the sunlight filtered in from directly above. The rays of light filtering in made the great tree look even more mysterious. Celestina folded her hands in a prayer position in order to pay her respects to the great tree. Thank you for always protecting all of us. Slowly, Celestina touched the great tree. Gently and compassionate she placed her hand on the thick trunk of the tree. At that moment, her eye suddenly turned baby pink from her original rose pink. Backquote no way, what's the meaning of this? It was a completely unexpected development. Celestina looked back in surprise at the shocked Soratek and Hisu and the smiling Lucaria. Hisu quickly came rushing to her. Lady Cell, are you alright? The color of your eye has changed. A, yes. My body seems to be fine. 
Isu came forward to support Selesina who was slightly staggering. What exactly are you planning to do here? Please calm down Valet. I didn't expect Lady Selesina to have such strong blessings either. Lucaria asked them to watch as he touched the great tree himself. The moment he touched the tree, the seal on his forehead, and his entire body softly began to glow. Lady Selesina, you do know, that the great tree grows by the power of the blessings of the spirits and gods right. This great tree holds the most power amongst all the great trees out there. Therefore, if a person who is blessed by the gods or the spirits were to touch the tree, you will be able to see that power with your naked eye. The condition of the light shows the degree to which the person is loved by the gods, said Lucaria. The light that Celestina's body produced was about the same as the light that Lucaria's body produced after touching the great tree. Point can I also touch the great tree? Of course, your highness Soratek. Thank you for your permission. Soratek swallowed hard and then came to the great tree. He wanted to know whether he would be able to produce the same kind of light that he had just witnessed. He touched the great tree and the seal on the back of his right hand began to glow with a strong light. He gulped and squinted. His entire body didn't glow like the bodies of Celestina and Lucaria. Do I not have strong blessings? It wasn't strange for Soratek to wonder that. But Lucaria immediately corrected him. Your Highness Soratek, your blessings would fall into the strong category. Please think of me, and Lady Celestina as an exception let's ask someone else to touch the great tree. Lucaria beckoned to the priest waiting behind, to come forward and touch the great tree. As soon as he touched the tree, the seal of blessings on the nape of his neck began to glow. He was blessed by the moon god Mani, but his seal was glowing even fainter than that of Soratek. What Lucaria had explained, just before was certainly true. Soratek possessed strong blessings. He was the main character of the game. So it was no surprise. Back quote then, what about me? She just couldn't understand the reason for her to possess such strong powers. Back quote is it, because I'm in a poor position as a Valenus, so they felt guilt towards me? Or something like that. Even if she didn't think of all this, she still couldn't understand the reason for her to be loved by a goddess. The reception room, after drinking the tea that Lucaria asked the priest serving him to serve. He expressed his thanks to Celestina and the others. I had an extremely meaningful time today. If I figure something out regarding your blessings then I will contact you Lady Celestina. I'm thinking of investigating about the person responsible for Lady Celestina's blessings ceremony and serving some form of punishment to him slash her, but I think that it will take some time since this is a special case. It had been about 10 years since Celestina had her ceremony of blessings, so it wasn't like they could immediately call out to the said person to ask about the circumstances. It was an extremely unusual judgment to say that someone wasn't blessed and Celestina was the first one to be told that. Therefore there was no way that the person responsible could say that. They had forgotten about it. Soratek nodded yes, and to Lucaria's judgment. For us just finding out that Celestina is blessed by a goddess is good enough. Of course, that doesn't mean that the person responsible for making the judgment that Celestina is not blessed cannot be free of blame either. Yes, of course. It would have been the same for a regular civilian. But Celestina was not only the daughter of Marquis, but she was also the fianke of the crown prince. They couldn't just let it go, even though they received an apology from the chief. Not only for the sake of Celestina, but also for the sake of the kingdom of Albert they had to take some action. Soratek would be informed about this, so Celestina could check with him later. Once that conversation ended, the priest came to inform the Lucaria that it was already time. A.H.H. 
It's already this late. I'm sorry but I still have some commitments after this. Since he was the chief of the great shrine, his schedule was pretty packed. He got up from his seat and the others followed behind. Thank you for giving us your precious time. Thank you, Lord Lucaria. No. I had a very meaningful time today. To think that Lady Celestina who was always known as the one without blessings, was actually blessed by a goddess we have to quickly send a reconfirmation proposal from our side. The pleasant face of Lucaria became cloudy. No. Since I don't have a visible seal, it would be natural for anyone to misunderstand. The fact that you've given us your time this time is already enough. Thank you Lady Celestina. Since you put it like that, it makes me feel a little better. Before heading to the door Lucaria turned and came to Celestina. Please to come to the Great Shrine again. You'll always be welcome here. Thank you. This is how Celestina's discussion with Lucaria regarding her blessings ended. After returning back from the Great Shrine, Celestina took a short break. Various things had happened, and she was tired. She was lying on in bed at the mansion in the royal capital thinking about various things. There was a knock on the door. Cell. She heard her father calling out to her. Normally, he would be at the castle at this time, is what she thought, but when she looked out of the window, she realized that it was already night time. Back quote when did so much time pass? She inclined her head, responded to him, and opened the door to welcome him in. Did something happen? Father? Yeah, I wanted to speak to you for a bit. Is it fine right now? Of course it is. She had already informed him of all that had taken place at the Great Shrine, so it couldn't be about that. Maybe it was about Selin Village? After inviting Bethelin, Celestina rang the bell that was placed in her room. The bell would call for Anna, her maid. Anna came in immediately, and Celestina asked her to prepare some tea they still hadn't had their dinner. Bethel sipped on the tea, and cut to the subject. I spoke to Earl Saltimore. Back quote I had completely forgotten. Celestina pretended to be calm at the words that Bethel just said. So many things had happened at the Great Shrine, that she had completely forgotten about the heroine, Miria Saltimal, other than her romance with Soratek. The conversation with Earl Saltimal was about the rude behavior of his daughter Miria towards Celestina. There was also the rumor about Miria, being too close to the Crown Prince, Soratek, but Soratek himself had denied it, and Celestina didn't mind it either. So it wasn't an issue. This time the reason that Bethel contacted Miria's father, Earl Saltimal was because Miria visited Selin village, Celestina's territory without prior notice. Moreover, she even selfishly touched the great tree that Celestina had so preciously taken care of. Miria's mother died early and she herself had a sickly body. Due to such pitiful circumstances, she was spoilt by her father and hence she expressed such rude behavior. Earl Saltimal, what kind of a person is he? That is she asked about what kind of a person the Earl is before asking how he had reacted, but Bethel showed an exhausted expression. Just by that expression, Celestina could read that it had been a troublesome meeting. Back quote sorry father for making you clean up after me. She expressed the apology in her mind, but there was nothing that she could do about it this time. Earl Saltimal has basically spoiled Lady Miria. You do know that he works in the Night Division right? Yes, I know that. But she didn't know anything other than that. She had only found out recently that Earl Saltimal was an old friend of her father Bethel. Lady Miria often visited the royal castle. But he happened to think that she did that in order to visit him. Back quote what the. She always seemed cheerful at home, so he never expected or noticed 
that she would have done something so rude to you, and his highness saw a tech. Oh fortunately, before I could speak to him, Lady Miria had already explained the sequence of events to him. He held his head after his daughter consulted him. He wondered if he had spoiled her too much. It had become a complicated situation but it was good that Celestina had suggested to Miria to speak to her father. The Earl would certainly not have liked to hear about this from Bethel before his daughter. Backquote maybe because she is the heroine, she was probably an intrinsically a good and straightforward person. However, that part was certainly a troublesome part of her personality. Point so what happened then? In conclusion, Miria will become the Shrine Maiden of the Shrine in this kingdom. She has been blessed by the God of Fertility Free, so she would be a backquote Shrine Maiden that serves a God. Celestina inclined her head, since she didn't understand the meaning of Miria becoming a Shrine Maiden now. She will first relearn the etiquette at the Shrine. Strictly. After all, they are very strict about manners there. She can always resign once she finishes her education, to become the Shrine Maiden. So that's how it is. This was probably a better idea than hiring a tutor, that would spoil her. The chances of Miria and Celestina meeting, would also decrease, so Celestina could spend her days peacefully. Backquote besides, Lord Soratek can visit the small shrine any time, so their love can blossom as well. It wouldn't be suspicious, if Soratek were to visit the small shrine with the pretense, that he is looking for more information on Celestina's blessings. On the contrary, his reputation would improve, if people were to think, that he is investigating about his Fian case blessings. The Earl said, that he could directly apple Elizabeth. what do you think Celestina? I don't want to, get involved any more than this. I would also like to decline to receive a direct apology so please tell him not to worry about the incident this time. Understood. If that is your will, I will respect it. She was relieved, that her request was accepted. The story might become more complicated, if she were to receive an apology. That would be troublesome. Celestina was of Elena's too it was better to bully me rather than ask her to apologize. Backquote come to think of it, did Lady Miria ever apologize to me? It was something that took place about two months ago, so Celestina didn't remember it anymore. However, she didn't remember receiving a sincere apology. Moreover, she didn't really seem apologetic for the series of things that took place. Backquote well, it's fine since the Earl reacted well. She was taking a break right now, but she would be going to the mansion in Harmel tomorrow, and then to Selin village. She had no time to think about me, Rhea. You've received some stuff from the Earl as an apology. A. She tried to touch your great tree, no that's wrong. She touched your great tree. So it's not like something like this can make up for it. Ye, yes. Bethel seemed to be a lot angrier than Celestina about this whole situation. Though he seemed to be smiling, his eyes were not smiling. Normally, I wouldn't let it go with just her receiving education at the shrine as a shrine maiden. Ah, ha ha ha. Celestina could only nod at Bethel's words. There are a lot of items that came as an apology. Of course, you can refuse them, if they are not to your liking. Bethel called over his butler Hanley who arranged various items and a piece of paper on the table. The items of apology that Earl Saltimal sent over included seeds and saplings of various plants that Selin village might need. He had also sent over material to make clothes and jewelry. Celestina was genuinely happy since Selin Village always used the income generated from harvesting and selling potatoes to butt other vegetables. This letter, A, does this also contain items of apology? Yeah. They all seem to be useful for Selin Village, 
but in case you don't want them to feel free to request monetary compensation instead. Father Celestina smiled. She realized that Bethel planned to seize this opportunity, even if Celestina wanted to decline. But there were certainly a lot of things listed on the paper. Sheep, goats, and horses 10 of each. Human resources as security personnel 10 of them. Wooden stones required to build a barn for the animals, and homes for the personnel. The construction of two wells. I'm grateful for all of them on behalf of Selin Village. Honestly speaking I was really concerned about security, since there are a lot of children in the village. Then I'll let the Earl know that these are fine. But, aren't these a little too much? For his daughter's dispute, this was certainly a lot of stuff to give as an apology. However, Bethel slowly shook his head. A house holds the rank of a Marquis, and you are the next Queen Cell. Did you forget that? The Earl may even want to do this as a means to make peace. Ah, is that so? Backquote that's right, I'm supposed to be the next queen. For the past few months, I had been saying that the time for my engagement with Lord Soratek to break was near but now it was really close. That's why she never really thought of herself like that. Miria and Soratek weren't able to interact for some time, since Celestina and Soratek had taken a trip to the Great Shrine, but they would now be able to spend time with each other. Then please inform the Earl that I'm really grateful for these items. Really, these are items of apology. Well, I'll inform him. Thank you. The case with Miria was safely settled this way. The next day, Celestina left with Hisu in a carriage for the village. They would be staying at the mansion in Harmel for a while, so it was farewell to the royal capital for some time. Hisu was riding the carriage as usual with Celestina and Toy as the passengers. By the way, Toy was finally in the middle of his afternoon nap. Celestina couldn't continue like this with Hisu having to drive the carriage. She had to hire a dedicated coachman soon. Backquote Earl Saltimal has given me some horses as well so the methods to reach Selin village will improve. She had to quickly buy a carriage to make it easier to get to and from the town. She would discuss it with Anton later. Celestina started the Asgeral system. Asgeral system. Start up. Celestina Inklet Great Tree owned. Level 5 Guardian Beast. Toy Territory owned. Albert Kingdom. Wrinkler Territory District 2 up. People. 28 Great Tree Skill Fertility Blessings Level 3. Vegetation grows well in a 5 km radius around the Great Tree and soil quality has improved. Sweet Nectar. Level 2. The Great Tree emits a sweet scent and attracts butterflies and bees. Blessings of the Amulet Level 2. No monsters come within 3 km of the Great Tree. New. Primitive Great Tree, increases the growth rate of the Great Tree territory named, yield increases specialty of the village, the recognition of the village increases. One hit KO, attack power increases donation heart, the shrine shop is available child of the territory, the physical strength of the people in the village increases prayer heart, the endurance of the people in the village, increases blessings of the shrine. Yield of the harvest increases she hadn't done anything other than whatever took place at the great shrine, so she didn't expect much to change, but the villagers had increased by 10. A. How come? Did some migrants come while she was away? While thinking about the possibilities, she suddenly remembered the talk with Bethel the previous day. A.A.H. That's right. The guards that Earl Saltimal would be dispatching. The numbers matched as well. Bethel sent a response of approval yesterday, so it would have reached Earl Saltimal by today morning at the earliest. Thank you for arranging it so quickly, woof, ah, did I wail you up? Sorry, Toy. Toy seemed to have awoken by Celestina's monologue. She stroked the soft fur on his back in order to apologize. 
This comforting feeling even made Celestina sleepy. You you you. This softness is the best should we just take a nap like this? She broke free from her thoughts when the carriage stopped and Hisu called out to her. We've reached cell in village lady cell. It's pretty noisy for some reason. Did something happen? They quickly alighted the carriage and looked ahead to find Anton and Gats talking to many strange men. It was noisy since they were speaking in a loud voice. That's why we are telling you to complete making the mansion of the Lord as the top priority. That's right, that's the top priority. That's, I also want to finish making Lady Celestina's mansion quickly. But we must make your homes and station at the entrance of the town quickly as well right? We are trained men, so a few weeks of lodging is nothing. Celestina and Hisu looked at each other once they heard the conversation. Apparently they were discussing about what should take precedence. Whether it should be Celestina's mansion or the home of the security personnel. Celestina didn't feel that she needed to get her mansion done on such an urgent basis that the people of the village would be left without a home. Celestina quickly went with Hisu and Toy to stop them. Everyone, please calm down. Lady Celestina. Gats brightened up when he saw her, and the ten guards immediately turned to her and saluted. Backquote amazing training. Celestina had been concerned about the kind of people that Earl Saltimal was planning to send, but they seemed to have been trained well. Well, Celestina was a top priority here, so she couldn't say anything. On behalf of everyone. The village chief Anton stepped forward. I'm sure that you've already heard about it, Lady Celestina, but these people are the security personnel for this village and they will be staying at this village. Yes, that's right. I also heard about it just yesterday, and I planned to inform all of you today she hadn't expected them to reach here this early. Celestina remitted the apology and explained to them that Earl Saltimal had extended his help to Selin Village. Anton immediately understood and extended his gratitude. Animals will be coming as well, so it's going to become pretty lively. We are really happy to receive materials to construct the barn and homes, but we don't have enough human resources. Oh right. Won't you guys lend us a hand? Gatsu was worried till now clapped his hands and said that it's a good idea, and checked whether the guards knew how to construct. Since it was just a single story home, you didn't really need to be skilled at it. Celestina concluded that it was fine to leave things to the proactive guards. Everyone, welcome to Selin Village, please make the barn and your houses as a priority, and then finish the construction of my mansion. She looked directly at the guards and they immediately agreed and saluted her. She was relieved that the problem with the construction was solved for now. One of the guards stepped forward. Lady Celestina, may I say something? Yes, please do. It's about the livestock and materials. When it arrives please, to call either me or any other guard, we'll help you carry it. Thank you. That's a great help. It would certainly be difficult to handle once the animal suddenly arrived, so she was truly relieved that it was taken care of. Just the guards were fine but anything more would be difficult. Right now they didn't have a place to stay. According to their conversation earlier, they were planning to camp out till their homes were ready. Till everyone's homes are completed, it may be inconvenient. But you can stay at the mansion in Harmel. What? Tent? She was planning to ask them to stay at her in Harmel, but she noticed a number of tents in the village square. Backquote don't tell me that those are their temporary homes. When Celestina stared at the tents, the guards nodded and said loudly. That's right. It's made durable so that it can withstand cold, rain, and wind. Don't worry about us as it will also be good training. Point I understand, but if you have any inconvenience, please contact us immediately. Thank you. 
seeing the strong will of the guards in their eyes, Selesina gave them permission to stay in the tents till the construction of the houses was complete. Of course, the construction of Selesina's mansion was postponed. They had finished discussing the matter about security guards. Gats would take care of the rest. Please take care of the rest, Mr. Gats. Yes. That's right Lady Selesina, Clo wanted to speak to you about something. Miss Clo? Thank you, I'll go to the store later. Maybe it was about the case that Selesina had spoken to her about. She was pretty excited. Chill was a female employee at the branch of Pickard Company in Selin Village. She was always bright and enthusiastic. A very good person. Let's go and water the great tree first. Yes, woof, the great tree was growing steadily it seemed to have grown a little taller. It was about a meter tall earlier, but it seemed to have grown by another 20 centimeters now. It had one beautiful white flower with petals, layered like a dress. The people of Selin village often praised it by saying that the flower was just like Selesina, but it was pretty embarrassing for her to hear that. Lady Sel, here's the watering can. Thank you. She watered the great tree. There was a sudden sound and a flower bud suddenly bloomed. Ah, a bud appeared. Amazing. Another flower will grow now. Yes, woof woof. It was really nice to see the great tree bloom. Backquoted must definitely be because of the skill that I acquired at the great shrine. The new skill that she had acquired, primitive great tree, increases the growth rate of the tree. It might even grow taller than Celestina's shoulder soon. Backquote fufu, I'm looking forward to it. It was still a small great tree. It will grow a lot more hereafter, many flowers will bloom, and it will become more and more beautiful. Grow fast, my great tree. Selesina muttered in a small voice, crouched down, and gently stroked its leaves with her fingertips. She was always worried that the great tree wouldn't bloom, or wouldn't even sprout, since she didn't have any blessings. However, she was blessed by a goddess. So it was growing quickly. What a happy villainess I am. She was surely the happiest villainess in the world. Hisu called out to her curiously, Lady Cell. I couldn't hear you, since you spoke so softly. What did you say? No, it's fine. I was just speaking to the great tree. Celestina smiled shyly, since it was embarrassing to say. Let's go meet Miss Clo now. I think she may have something good for us. Yes, woof, they went to the store, to find that Miss Clo was in charge of the store at the moment. There were no customers, so it was a good time to talk. Good day, Miss Clo. Lady Celestina, welcome. I was waiting for you. Thank you for all your hard work at the Great Shrine. Jissel was super happy. Clo brightened her expression, and told Celestina more about what had been going on in the village. Ah, it's Toy. You look as fluffy as always. I was so sad, that I couldn't touch you all these days Oh, My Clo went to pet Toy's soft fur. Toy was resting at the entrance of the shop in trance. Hisu looked at Toy who was in his afternoon nap mode and sighed. Toy is shy, so he most likely didn't miss it. Ah, no no. It's okay. Thank you Mr. Hisu. The only people that Toy liked was Celestina, Bethel, and Soratek. He wasn't even used to the butler Hanley at the Wrinklet territory. Apparently, it wouldn't do if the person wasn't blessed by a god. Toy was a divine beast, so it was probably an expected behavior. Well, I'll prepare some delicious meat next time. That's right. Lady Celestina, the prototype for the hand cream is ready. Wow, I would love to see it. She went inside the shop with Clo, and they brought out the prototype for the hand cream. The liquid was sealed in a glass container. It looked beautiful. 
I tried making three types with varying amounts of honey. Can I try it on? Of course. She took one of the types of hand cream that was finally completed. It released a beautiful sweet scent. And was tinted with ha strong yellow. This one probably had a lot of honey in it. She took some in her fingers. And found it to be very moist. It was easy to spread and apply. This is really nice. Really? Thank god. Thank you. That's the best one. Hisu, you try some as well. It feels very nice on the skin and it's very moist. Hisu, who was waiting at the back let out and back quote eh? Isn't that something that women use? Hisu looked troubled and Celesina smiled.